From the uh, previous um, video, we saw that we created a common library, which is down here, by pulling in individual libraries from the different branches of the VBS. We don't need these libraries now. I'm just going to close them down uh, because now they're saved uh, in a specific place on your USB or your hard disk. So the next thing we need to do is to type code our items in our Revit model and uh, we will type code this by attaching the library uh, item to the item uh, the object for example a column here uh, and uh, while we choose one object and type code it uh, every other object which has a similar characteristic as the object chosen will get the same type code. Um, there is one problem if the items, the objects here, are grouped, uh, right now they're not grouped, but I'm going to group them now. And you can see, uh, I'm just going to call it group 1. And you can see they're grouped now. These two items are grouped. Uh, if I click on there, uh, I cannot type code it until I ungroup it. Uh, you can see this because if I go into Sigma Estimates and into Element Properties and type parameters, there's no opportunity to type code. Um, the item uh, at all. However, if I ungroup them um, uh, like this and then I click one of the items, you can see only one item is now chosen um, and I can go into estimates, Sigma estimates and into element properties and into type parameters. You can see there's an opportunity to type code this to our library which we will do in a minute. Um, it's very important then if you array some of your items in your drawings to ungroup them before you type code them. You can type code them in several ways. Uh, we can choose an item here. This is the, uh, the column in the ground floor which is uh, slightly bigger than the column on the first floor. Go into uh, Sigma Estimates, go into Element Properties, click Type Parameters and we can click here and we get this type code set up. Set up means we have to find the library which we're going to type code this uh, column from. Uh, and to do that we click uh, here and we navigate to where we have saved that library. In this case the library I'm talking about is a common library which I showed previously and you can see the common library comes up. It says here, assign value from sigma field number to identity data type code. And now we can go and find the actual type code for that column by clicking on value and going in, into our library and in this case under superstructure and under columns and I'm choosing the column for the ground floor. Notice the number here. Click OK and you can see the number comes up here and click OK again and if I choose another item which has similar characteristics as this column for example the column over here that should be type, code, type coded with the same number as you can see here so every item you choose is type coded if it has a similar characteristics to the one you type coded If we use this method, that means that we have to look at the drawing and find each and every item. You have to toggle the drawing around and find the items and then go into this and into this and then find a type code for, for, for the item. Uh, there is, uh, of course, another way of doing it and that would be to go directly into settings when you're in the Sigma estimates. Go directly into settings here and then this will turn up, this uh, export to Sigma file will turn up and under export we're going to export it as uh, a 3D model which will be split up into levels, ground floor, first floor, etc. in categories, types of uh, elements and then the object itself and if I click on here then I can see the item I had before, the one I chose, the column on, on the ground floor, the 40 times 40 column here is already been chosen. 
So I I um, I can type code this. I'm just going to remove this uh, these uh, check marks because they are from a previous uh, piece of work I did on this actual drawing. Uh, I just forgot to remove the check marks, and um, then I will show you how we can use this as a basis for type coding our items. We've already type coded this item, the column, uh, previously, so it's on here, and I have to check it. I put a check mark in there. All these items here are everything that's in the actual drawing itself uh, that we sent over from Sigma um, and um, sorry from uh, from Revit. This is from the Revit drawing itself. All these items belong to the drawing here. And I will now try and type code some of the items. Uh, the pile caps, for example, in this in in this uh, building. I can uh, click on here under code and uh, click there and I can go into the setup menu now and uh, you can see I've chosen the, the library before it's now pre-chosen again and this is in place so go to value and I find a pile cap uh, from my uh, common library and the pile cap is here under point, point foundations and click OK and then I obviously choose it and in this way I can choose the different materials uh, of the building uh, by clicking in this area here and choosing the particular item. For example, the strip foundations, you can see the setup is okay here. We go into the, the library here and we find the strip foundation and click there and we've chosen it. And then remember to uh, check it here. Uh, this is going to be measured by length and by meters. And this is it's important because you need to find out uh, the way your um, your uh, library is measuring things. What do I mean by the way the library is measuring things? Well, you can see the strip foundation here. It's I've I've chosen length here as a basis, and I've chosen here from this. I've chosen meters. Uh, as a basis to measure it, and why do I do that? Well, I need to 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 go in to my library. I just uh, open the library. Here is a common library, and you can see under strip foundations. Strip foundations in my library are measured in lbm, which is in Danish running meters. So it's meters. It's a length I'm measuring it in. Therefore, the the um, library and the, uh, the the drawing uh, in uh, Revit must agree with each other otherwise you cannot find this item so that's very important to check that your uh, measurement in the library uh, fits the measurement here and when you choose uh, the mode of measurement you want to use you can see that structural framing for example the HEB steel, co uh, steel um, uh, beams here, uh, it says steel columns, so you should read beams there, but it's actually steel beams. They're measured as STK, which means pieces, PCS. So if I go into my uh, my Revit, I can see uh, the HEB beams are measured as pieces. And this has some significance, which I'll uh, talk about later. Uh, I've, uh, I've almost finished all the, um, the type coding now. I haven't type coded some things like the staircase. Uh, I just want to show this as an example. You can see everything is type coded. Everything has been ticked off uh, and chosen. We've made sure that things in the library, the way they're measured up, agree with the uh, with the things that are measured up here, and so on and so forth. Uh, when I, I click OK to this, and then I go in and I. Uh, go into configuration and check that, for example, Revit is measured in square meters, Sigma measures is in square meters. Revit calls it pieces, Stigma, Sigma calls it STK stuck. Revit, uh, Revit uh, measures length in meters, Sigma measures it in LBM running meters in Danish. Uh, this word type code must be here. Uh, you can choose it from the list here. Or you can you can see the list is up the type code is up there. Or you can type it in. It's case sensi sensitive, so you can type it in yourself here. And when everything is ready uh, to be sent, um, you can uh, you can you can call the uh, um, 
the calculation you're sending it to a certain name uh, point SIG which it means a Sigma calculation so note where this is uh, saved uh, in this case it's called total building uh, uh, C uh, dot SIG when I send it to Sigma it'll ask me if I want to overwrite that and I've done this before so I'm, I'm going to say yes to that and it sends it over to Sigma In Sigma, I've got my library open. I don't need that anymore. I'm just going to close it down. And I'm going to open that uh, file which I saved just uh, a few minutes ago. And um, it should be here under estimation. Is this one here. When it's opened, you can see by... Um, if we go into... I'm just going to change the language here because uh, I realize now that uh, I've been doing this in the Danish version. So I'm going to, just going to go into File and I'm going into um, options and I'm going into uh, language here and I'm going to change this to English uh, and click OK to that. I'm going to change it back actually again later but uh, Sigma should now open up uh, in the English uh, language and uh, you can see the uh, the, the uh, names are now in English you may have you may not have this one but the rest of them should be the same and we're just going to open that file again which I uh, mentioned previously and this is the file here open it and go into content and here if we open it up we can see the different levels uh, as uh, marked up on our Revit drawing and if we click on here you can see uh, uh, here that the the pile caps are measured up. If I click on pile caps, um, the the pile caps are measured up here uh, in STK, which means stuck, which is PCS pieces. But there is no uh, there's no calculation of the costs, and uh, this would be the same for for everything else. Uh, the floor area is measured up uh, here in square meters, but there's no calculation. Uh, and in order to get the calculation we simply go into uh, libraries and update library update from library rather click on that my uh, Sigma is playing up a little bit here but when I, when I, when I click on the uh, update from libraries I should get this uh, here then I uh, navigate to where my library is my common library and I choose the common library uh, and it's here and if I update now uh, by clicking update uh, here um, you can see that uh, some uh, some costs uh, come in and you can see the costs of uh, the different items uh, for example each pile cap has been uh, now uh, uh, costed and uh, 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 a couple of other things also costed here as you can see uh, so uh, this is the cost part of it all costs seems to be in place uh, so we go into the summary here now to make sure that the the total cost here and the sales price as you can see here are the same this indicates that we need to put some margin on the project the total cost meaning the cost of actually building the building and the sales price means the contractors price to the client if they're the same that means the margin needs to be added and to, to do margin we can click on here automatic uh, makeup markup and click here and uh, we, we, we base it on the percentage of the cost price in other words the percentage of what's in this column um, uh, we have some words here we cannot change into English uh, lie means hire of, uh, of uh, tools uh, lun means wages or salary material material means materials the cost of bricks and mortar etc concrete material means equipment like do dozers cranes and that sort of thing uh, in order to put in a column here margin add margin to each of these items uh, we click on settings and we add a new markup column by clicking add and then we can write here margin this is the the markup or we can all call, we can also call it markup it doesn't matter um, here we can put a percentage in for the different markups we want on the different items 
I have now put put these markups on 4% on uh, tools, 5% on wages, 30% on materials, and 5% on uh, equipment like cranes and so on. This is the markup the contractor would put on uh, the different items of his works. There could be also something called subcontractors here if we wanted to add that on as a, as a new category. So I'm going to click OK to this and notice here that the, the sales price will now differ from the uh, cost price and you can see the markup uh, is a difference between these. If you want to see columns uh, different various columns uh, added into this uh, calculation here you can click on here and you can open the columns you wish to see for example here you can use all columns or you can use columns regarding sales price etc and you can uh, you can choose from this uh, which ones you want to see um, in, in in the in the calculation for example I might want to see margin so I click on there and I can see the margin I've added to the each item. Another thing of interest is that uh, we need to put on some building site and in order to put on building site we can put that on as a percentage by clicking on uh, while being in the summary area clicking on you can see summary up here click on supplements and deductions and we can base our uh, supplements and deductions on, on the cost price or the sales price. I'm going to use cost, pr uh, cost price here and I'm going to, I'm going to put in uh, uh, an item uh, called P for percentage. I'm going to put in three of those, three P's under each other, and I'm going to put a percentage of the of the cost price on establish establishing site. I've got establishing site here as a percentage. I've got a running site, uh, the cost of the site manager and inclement weather during the winter period which in Denmark is 1st November to 31st of March and I'm going to add on a percentage of uh, the cost price and here I'm going to put on 4% and here I'm going to put on 3% I'm going to put on 3% uh, here for uh, I think it might be a hard winter so I'm going to put on 3% for that click OK and you notice now that the winter weather and uh, the site uh, running and establishment is in place now. The last thing I'd like to say in this connection here is that we also have something called VAT. In Denmark it's 25 percent, in, in England it's probably different. I'm going to click Control and E and go into Settings and here I can change the VAT to I think in, in England maybe it's 17 percent rather than 25 percent. So I'm going to click there and you can see now 17 percent VAT is on and here is the sales price for this particular project and now uh, I would save this uh, and uh, um, save it someplace safe uh, and I'm going to call this uh, C1 uh, well actually I've called it C already so I'm going to click C and save and uh, overwrite the existing one and this might take a while uh, so be a bit patient because it's quite a large um, calculation. That actually ends this video and the next step would be to transfer this calculation into a time schedule.